इसमें कोई शक नहीं है वैंकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान Sundays at 3:30 p.m. Dil Apna Pakistan presents a cultural magazine show for Canadians with Pakistani roots, featuring community information and entertainment. Nadreen Dil Apna Pakistan ke saath intikhab Ahmed Sare City Hall ke samne aaj एक यहाँ पे प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस हो रही है और उसका आंखों देखा हाल हम यहाँ पे दिखाएंगे देखते रहिए वैंकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान सिटी ऑफ सर वैंकूवर के सब में एक उभरता हुआ सिटी जहाँ की पॉलिटिक्स सिटी पॉलिटिक्स में आ, बहुत ज्यादा एक ऐसी हिलचल और खलबली मची हुई है कि यहाँ पे बड़े बड़े आइकॉन जो हैं सेवे कलेक्शन में हिस्सा ले रहे हैं और पाँच से ज़्यादा जो हैं सिटी अफसर के मेयर के कैंडिडेट्स हैं आज हम आपको और उनकी जो टीम है उनसे बात मिलवाते हैं उनकी प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस देखते हैं नाजरीन वैंकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान के साथ इस वक्त बिलाल चीमा मेरे साथ हैं बिलाल चीमा जो हैं वो इस वक्त एक डिबेट में जा रहे हैं और मैं इनसे पूछूंगा बिलाल साहब ये कौन सी डिबेट है और किस लिए ये हो रही है इस डिबेट का आंखों देखा हाल हम आपको थोड़ी इसके इस सेगमेंट के बाद दिखाएंगे जी बिलाल साहब बताइएगा ये आज डाउन टाउन बिजनेस इम्प्रूवमेंट एसोसिएशन की तरफ से काउंसिल की डिबेट है कल उन्होंने अपनी मेयर मेयर्स uh, की डिबेट करवाई थी तो आज उन्होंने काउंसिल uh, uh, जो टीम्स हैं उनसे पूछा था कि हमें काउंसिल मेंबर्स दें जो काउंसिल के लिए खड़े हैं जो आगे इधर डिबेट करें और क्वेश्चन uh, आंसर uh, uh, करें तो इस सिलसिले में आ, आज इधर आए अच्छा वेरी गुड सो देखते हैं आइए नाजरीन देखते हैं अंदर क्या हो रहा है और बिलाल जीमा की थैंक यू अदर साइड अदर साइड थैंक यू कैंडिडेट्स at uh, civic plaza we uh, we came up with three guarantees we're going to deliver a resident we're going to review the residential permits within 3 days we're going to review uh, uh single family homes within 3 weeks and we're going to review the uh application for multi family within 3 months and what did the the council one of the councilors said in the leader was oh no 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 Two weeks is it can be done. It can be done. And what does the state say? Answer for it. When we think about crime and we think about um, the issues that we face as a city, again, it's it's like does anyone not understand that you know our our, our hindsight is twenty twenty? We know where we've come from, right? And to solve any of these issues. You need someone that's gonna that understands how to collaborate, someone that's gonna be able to reach across and work with other levels of government. We as a city do not have the complete resources to be able to solve these issues alone in silos. We work with advocates within the city, the the the, uh, the organizations within the city, and we give uh, um, the opportunity. For other government levels to work with us, we need to be advocates for our city, not just people that are reviewing paper, pushing paper, making decisions. We need to be able to advocate for the needs in our city, and I'm certain that if we have the right mayor, if we have the right council, and everyone commits to doing that, we can solve these problems. Thank you. It's been our main platform since the beginning. It's not something we just. Um, put on our side of our desk. It's always been the main thing on our platform, and we take that very seriously. But affordable housing just isn't um, um, building high rises all through the city. We need more social housing. We need more rental stock. We need more supportive housing. We need a continuum of housing throughout the city. Not just what the developers want, but what the city needs. Affordable housing also means 
You know, can we get more daycare spaces in those developments? Can we get better transportation that feeds that? Because all of those things are linked. And when we have a high rise that that is still expensive for someone to be in, the candidates has to deal with the challenges around um, that many people feel that our, our streets are less are becoming less. Uh, there are increasingly uh, more in incidents of random acts of violence. There's a sense that our streets are not walkable. There's an opioid crisis that is ravaging communities. Every day in British Columbia, seven people are dying. So the question is this, what can cities do to be part of the solution? And how does your platform address that? So we'll start uh, to my immediate left with, uh, with Philip. Well, I know you can't do this alone. You're gonna be uh, looking at various agencies, whether it's health, police, uh, mental health advocates. I know that uh, one of the proponents of this was my, my my mother Linda when she started Elizabeth Fry. You're going to need to come up with a plan. A plan, for instance, like CAPSU, which is the uh, Child Asylum Psychiatric Unit, and uh, mental health is a big issue when it comes to actually prevention, as well as involving the the kids at the root in sporting events or arts, and of course let them. Uh, uh, have a place where they're not going to slip between the cracks. Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Deal Apna Pakistan presents a cultural magazine show for Canadians with Pakistani roots, featuring community information and entertainment. If you are looking for an architect to design your dream house or commercial building, then contact UDC Design Center Limited, an architecture and interior design firm with over 25 years of experience. UDC Design Center also provide 3D presentations and prepare permit drawings for city approvals. Call Bilal Mahmood 778-858-8794. सिटी में सरे सिटी के सिविक सेंटर में लाइब्रेरी के सामने दिलप्रम पाकिस्तान का प्रोग्राम आप यहां से देखेंगे आप इस अवायल को यहां पे सिविक कैंडिडेट की एक डिबेट हुई है और उस डिबेट का आंखों देखा हाल हम आपको दिखाएंगे देखते रहिए वनकोर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान that the candidates provide the questions they were given in advance as well as looking at their website. So the question to fill up is this. We've talked a lot about, uh, about housing, about building community amenities and facilities, whether it's roads, bridges, swimming pools, community centers, housing. The challenge is when a lot of those projects are proposed, many residents will come forward and say, well, we like it, but not in our neighborhood, not here because of the noise, the views, the traffic. That windows in my backyard can be an impediment to growth. So, Philip, if you were elected council on a council on October the 15th, how would you deal with that and ensure that that growth and projects that are proposed by the city get the support of all the residents? So collaboration is a word that everyone loves to use. Um, working at the BIA, it's, 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 it means a lot to, to meet with someone and hear what they have to say, to hear their views. Everyone has energy, everyone has a voice, and those voices matter. They sometimes might not be in the long-term vision of what Surrey is going to be, but they still need to be heard. Now, the advisory committees were taken out at City Hall bringing those back and ensure that they, the community felt comfortable, that they could have a safe place to bring their voices. Across British Columbia on October the 15th, we elect mayors and councillors. Voter turnout is going to be the lowest compared to any election that we have in our country, whether it's federal or provincial. So how do we engage citizens in a way to increase voter turnout that they get excited and engaged in what's happening in City Hall? so we ensure that more citizens are expressing their views and opinions. Yeah, vote, voter, voter turnout's always been disappointing with uh, civic elections, and uh, it shouldn't be, because we're the people that are the closest uh, 
uh, level of government to listening to the populace. There's great opportunity in local government. I mean, opportunity, we have the youngest workforce in Canada. There's great opportunities for the BIA everywhere. And of course, when they are getting things delivered to them that are meaningful, uh, we have to reach out to the public and we have to actually make clear to them that we're their ear. And uh, no matter what side of the fence you sit on in certain policies, uh, I will listen to you and I will be able to take uh, into account uh, all of those issues that whether they, they, they be uh, um, uh, NIMBYism or whether they be uh, uh, advocate for the city of Surrey, which is really one of the most important jobs that a councillor can play. When you think about being an advocate for Surrey, you think about British Columbia's second largest city, uh, what makes you proud and what will you be articulating as a councillor for reasons why people should live and invest in this community? Well, listen, um, we speak 100, over 100 languages in the city. People are coming here from all over the world. Every month, there's estimates between 900 and 1,500 people that come to our city. They're coming for a reason. The city is exciting. The city is growing. The city, but we can do better. And I'm going to be an advocate for young kids, the 130,000 kids under 18 that call this city home, and for our seniors, that 90,000 seniors. Listen, there's no one more, there's no group more that, that, that had a hard time uh, during this pandemic than our seniors. They deserve a break. And that's why I'm really proud that the Surrey First team under Gordy O has decided to make sure that our community centers, our pools, our rinks, our gyms are gonna be free for access for our, for our seniors and for our children. Because that's the way that we're gonna keep them out of the unsupervised parks and that's the way we're gonna keep them safe from being preyed upon by gangsters and drug pushers and drug dealers. This is the type of things that excite me, that how do we protect and plan for the future? Supporting supportive housing, assisted living, so that we can help people that are out on the street and bring them inside and provide the help they need. And of course, we need to work with uh, federal health, provincial government, federal government. I come from uh, the NDP. My friend, Sukhtali Wal, running for United Surrey as a mayor, comes from the Liberal Party. He knows how to open doors in Ottawa, and I certainly know I have friends in, in, uh, in Victoria. Thank you. Two, are you committed to SkyTrain going from city center down to Newton? The first one, yes. Okay. Um, on the second question, why does it have to be SkyTrain? Why, like, if you think about it, SkyTrain is technology from 30 years ago. Is there no alternative to SkyTrain? Is there something that can be done quicker and faster? Something of, you know, a solution in the interim that leads us and gives us the time, affords us the time to look at options for the long term? I support connecting our town centers. I support public transit getting people from north to south, south to north. But I don't say that, I don't tie myself down to one solution. We need to invest the time to look at all options, look at the costs, look at the benefits, look at the longevity, the longevity of the uh, uh, technology and the programs we build, and then make an informed decision. And you make a decision by consulting the community and making sure they're involved. Thank you. Uh, I want Surrey to be a place that you can be proud to call home again. And that means that there's gonna be great opportunity in the future for you. I want there to be great opportunity. You have a wonderful workforce in the city of Surrey. It's the youngest workforce uh, in the region. And we have educational opportunities with KPU, with SFU, with UBC. We can grow the city in a way that is very livable, that is enjoyable for you to live. And then uh, once again, you can be proud to call home. Thank you. Look at our slate, um, our team, as we, the United Surrey, 
you look at Sukhthal, you are coming from uh, the Liberal Party and me coming from the, the NDP, you have a third candidate that comes from the conservative side. Jeff Bridges is a longtime conservative in Fleetwood Port Kells. Uh, we've already shown that uh, we can work collaboratively for Surrey, not for any party or, or, or special interest groups for Surrey. You know, long, long time ago when I was, when I was young, um, you know, circus used to come to town and it lasted about two or three weeks. We've had a circus in City Hall for four years. And it's time, it's time to end that circle. Let's work collaboratively for the people of Surrey, for the residents of Surrey, so that we can bring that prosperity to Surrey. Surrey is a, is a wonderful place. It's given me a lot over the years. There's a lot of potential. We need to realize that potential, work with the residents, work with the community to bring about a positive change for our kids and our, our, for our future. I'm for the Daily Double. Uh, let's go with uh, four under vision for downtown Surrey. Okay, vision for downtown Surrey, question number four. Do you support a free jump off, jump on bus in downtown Surrey? You have one minute. Well, transportation is, is key for the city of Surrey. Now, downtown being our economic hub where our university is, we need to encourage transportation as much as possible. The city of Surrey is growing so fast with 550,000 people plus and thousands of people moving into the city every month. When we encourage transportation as our main mode of getting around, we can encourage people to get out of their cars because King George, 132nd, 140th, 152nd are already packed to the max. Certainly uh, dear to my heart is uh, what is currently being constructed in Cloverdale as a ring can. I think that some of the livability to give the actual youth a place to be and to play and to uh, uh, stay out of the actual uh, issues where they would be enticed by any sort of crime. Nazreen Dilab from Pakistan is with us today. Today Bilal Chima is with us. Bilal Chima is a young candidate for, for uh, Sare Council. Surrey Council is being uh, will be elected on October 15th, and there will be a, a pre uh, polling as well. So I will request uh, Bilal Chima to uh, tell about uh, the upcoming election and the voting. How soon the people can vote uh, prior to uh, the election? Absolutely. First, the first thing is that the vote is very important. आप आज आए हैं बैठे हैं मेरे साथ गुफ्तगू हुई है हमारी तो आपने ये मुझे मौका दिया इलेक्शन के बारे में अक्टूबर 15 जैसे आपने बोला इलेक्शन डे है इलेक्शन डे से पहले भी लोगों को मौका मिलेगा अक्टूबर 5th को वेंसडे अक्टूबर 8th एंड 9th सैटरडे संडे और फिर एक वेंसडे को अक्टूबर 12th को 8am से लेके 8pm तक उनको मौका मिलेगा वोट करने का सब जो लोग देख रहे हैं या जो ये रिकॉर्डिंग देखेंगे मैं उनको याद दिलवाना चाहता हूं कि आपका ये हक है और ये बाय लॉ हक है आप अपने एम्प्लॉयर से या आप अपने एम्प्लॉयी को जरूर तीन घंटे की विथ पे आप देना पड़ेगा आपको जे वो वोट डालने जाएंगे तो ये बात है कि आप इनकरेज करें और आप खुद भी अपना टाइम निकाल के वोट जाके डालें ये आपका हक है ये बड़ी मुश्किल से मिला लोगों ने अपनी जाने इस हक के लिए दी हैं so don't waste it. Please avail karo or jake vote dale uh, on October 15th, 5th, 8th, 9th, or 12th. Very good. Uh, Bilal Bhai, uh, I would like you to comment on the, um, uh, in English as well, because uh, most of the youngsters, young kids, are um, having uh, difficulty, you know, in understanding uh, native language as well. So would you mind to say, say the same message in brief uh, to the public? Yeah. October 15th is election day, but you also have the opportunity to vote uh, during advance polls, October 5th, 8th, 9th, and 12th, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There'll be six locations across the city. You can go to any one of them, uh, and it'll be across these different uh, um, city centers. Um, this vote is very, very, very valuable. Uh, many people died 
for us to have this right, for us to be able to actually exercise this right. And I encourage all youngsters, family members, not only go vote, but in encourage other people to vote. It matters. It matters for our future. It matters for the types of services we want. It matters for our seniors. Everything rides in the trajectory of our beautiful city over the next 30 years rides on this particular vote in this particular election. Very good. This particular election is very special because a couple of Muslim candidates are also running. And uh, being Canadian, Canadian Muslim, uh, is, is a big honor for us to have you on the, on the voting uh, as, a, as, a, as a running candidate for that. Uh, I would like to ask uh, you about today's uh, uh, debate. Uh, you want to elaborate about, uh, actually, as a matter of fact, there was a lot of uh, clapping uh, on your uh, answers, but you have given the answers. Your your uh, speech, uh, little uh, speeches were very um, in commanding. So, would you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, it was fun. Uh, it was from the heart. Yes. This is based on my lived experience, um, growing up in the city, um, going to school in the city, um, now raising a family in the city spending time with my elder uh, aging parents in the city all my lived experience uh, I channeled that into my answers today um, and it was from the heart uh, it wasn't uh, uh, something that I practiced for um, or you know memorized uh, it was digging deep and making sure that what I was speaking was honest in the truth um, and, and, and uh, um, based on my lived experience based on what my conversations have been with people across the city, it doesn't matter what corner of the city they live in. And I think um, when people can bring that type of honesty and, uh, and truthfulness and um, uh, lived experience to their uh, uh, um, discussion, then there's no doubt that we can build a better city, a more thriving city, a better community, a more safer community, a more thriving community. This is what we can do when we actually put our minds and uh, um, and intentions and, and, and ideas together and listen to one another. That's right. What, what do you think? Uh, do you think about uh, 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 the, there, there is a like uh, I, I see there is a contradiction of the uh, in uh, cities um, plans about uh, low cost housing and uh, uh, homelessness and the drugs. Uh, I don't know whether what the uh, the current uh, regime is doing and what what, what will be your uh, uh, strategy of uh, telling uh, your team that once you guys win uh, what what is the possible um, solutions for those problems thank you um, listen every op individual or group that has an opportunity to govern has priorities um, maybe this past council and this past mayor um, didn't prioritize the public safety issue and public safety means much more than just our policing and the type of uniform our police wear it means you know do we have enough firefighters those firefighters are our first responders public safety includes the threats from natural disasters and the fires that we face and just the other day in my in my cul-de-sac there was a fire across the street and I watched with awe um, how the firefighters tackled that big fire it was amazing, and thank God that we didn't lose any life, but it was something that was uh, uh, reminded me that our firefighting um, and the men uh, and women who wear the firefighting uh, uh, um, uniform are just as much important to our public safety as the police are. That's so I'll just tell you a little bit about what I think. Yeah. Um, how do we protect our future generations? You know. The ones, the youth right now, and some of the young adults that are involved in drugs and gangs, most of them are far-fetched, like they're too deep. Uh, it'll take a lot of resources, and it'll cost a lot of money and investment to save them, even though we are doing it. And we should continue to put that effort. But we would see more value and see more benefit from preventative measures. That means that we need to pivot. We need to look at the upcoming future generations, those that are 9, 10, 11 and growing. Because right now, I work with the RCMP, I work with the city police, I've been talking to them, and they tell me that Malau, children as, as young as 9, 10, 11 are being preyed on in the schoolyards, in the parks, to push the drugs. So the drug dealers and the drug gangs have adapted. We have not as a society. So we need to adapt. How do we do this? 
we make sure that the, the money that we have already paid for to establish these rec centers, and we need more, there's nearly not enough, but we need to make sure that our children 18 and younger have free access to those. I am a father of three young children. When I take my children to the pool, it costs me $16 every time I go. That's and right. ask, a, ask a father or a mother right now if they can register their kids in pool lessons, swimming lessons. It's That's impossible. Right. It's impossible. So yeah. what do we do? We need to make sure that we take our kids and give them a safe, supervised environment to be active, to stay connected, and to grow. We need to do that. And right, what's right. the cost of that? We have about 130,000 young kids, 18 and under, in this city. We have about 90,000 seniors. That's okay? right, yeah. So we want to make sure that those that matter in our society, those that actually we work hard for, those that we have worked hard for us, our seniors, are looked after. This is what a compassionate society does. That's this is right. what a, a, um, a, a growing society does. And this is why I'm so proud that Gordy Ho, the Surrey First team, is proposing to spend, invest $2 million a year to make sure that our 130,000 kids, 18 and under, and 90,000 seniors have free access. Our seniors need to remain active, connected, and engaged. They can't be sitting on picnic benches on the parks. They can't be running away from the, uh, uh, the rain during the winter and the cold during the winter. They need safe places as well. They've earned that right. And no one suffered more during this pandemic than our seniors who were isolated. And a lot of them fell into depression. A lot of them lost their health. So this is not only a benefit to our healthcare system, but it's also a benefit in, in the future to a public safety cost. That's right, yeah. Very good. Uh, Bilal, you have said uh, a lot uh, in a small talk. And uh, being a resident of Surrey, uh, you have... Uh, uh, met those challenges and you don't want the other people to face those same challenges the similar issues what the ordinary citizens are facing so once again thank you very much uh, you are uh, people are watching the uh, lapna pakistan so we'll once uh, once again we'll say vancouver ki jaan the lapna pakistan vancouver ki jaan the lapna pakistan. pakistan thank, thank you, you so much thank you इसमें कोई शक नहीं है वैनकूवर की जान दिल अपना पाकिस्तान